Okay, well, I tell you what, it is certainly great to be among my peeps. Uh, I uh, have been, uh, I spent 30 years of my 34 career, 34-year uh, career in mobility forces, and it is, it's absolutely awesome to be back amongst you all. Um, I've just spent the last, uh, I've been in the job three months, and the majority of that time has been spent with the Air um, Combat Command, and um, you know, getting, going to the F-35 IOC and just spending a lot of time uh, with the F-22 and just all the different communities within ACC. And uh, General Carlisle and I, in each moment that we have to spend with our, our pilots and our maintainers and the, the different folks within that organization of ACC, you know, the, the one theme that we keep coming back to every time we're together with them is we need to have airmen for life. And I think if I could, if I could leave you with one thing that you leave ATA with is that you're an airman for life. Whether you start in the active component or you grow up in the reserve component, uh, you're, you're an airman for life. So for the active component members, if you ever choose to make that, uh, that hard, hard choice of transition, please, we need you in the reserve component because your country needs you. We're not getting the numbers coming into the, to the service all services um, that we're going to need in the future, and it's just critical to sustaining who we are as a Department of Defense and as the best Air Force in the world. So um, remember that, if you would please. Thank you. Well, thank you for that warm welcome. As I said, it's certainly glad to be amongst my peeps. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, General Everhard, General Fogelman, General McNabb, other general officers. Um, it's great to be home, and I, I thank you for that. For ATA, uh, thank you for this amazing sympo symposium and bringing together all the partners in the business of mobility. We do it better than anyone else. Our strength is truly in our partnership. We've been partnering since the mid-60s, and every day it gets stronger. It's amazing. Uh, as I said, I've been flying airplanes in mobility forces for 30 years. I've been through the retirements of the C-40 or the uh, uh, not the C-40, <laughs> let's hope not the C-40, uh, C-141 and C-9s personally. And uh, next new platform to join the elite force is going to be the, the KC-46. And we will uh, enjoy partnering in that weapon system also. So today I'm going to talk about just a couple of things. I'm going to highlight uh, for you just some of the accomplishments of our 40,000 members of our 70,000 Air Force Reserve Force. Uh, but of those 40,000, uh, they operate within the Air Mobility Force portfolio, and I just want to highlight some of, those, uh, some of those accomplishments over the last year for you. We spend so much time talking about the budget. We spend so much time talking about the challenges because the world is complex and the challenges are out there. I just want to take a few minutes and just highlight uh, what the Reserve Forces, Mobility Forces are doing, and of course, partnering every day uh, with AMC in every mission set. And then I'll end with a, a video uh, called Weapon of Choice. And it, it highlights the, uh, the life of a citizen airman. So next slide, please. So when you look at the AeroVac accomplishments we've had over the, over the past years, we do, we've done around 250 medical evacuations uh, across the globe, supporting every combatant command. And we, within the Air Force Reserve, 60% of that mission set is within the Air Force Reserve itself. So in the picture is a 36th uh, AeroVac squadron um, at Keesler doing um, AE training within the 53rd uh, Reconnaissance Squadron there on the WC-130Js. If you go to the next slide, of course we operate the MAFs, the Mobile Area Fighter Fighter System, and then the Aerial Spray Missions um, at two of our wings. And this shows a picture of uh, the 302nd uh, approaching a power line fire near Pocatello, Idaho, in support of the National uh, Forest Service. So let's go ahead and play the video of a MAFS, the latest uh, MAFS video. Ma'am 5, real good, real good, and uh, nice line, and air attack, lead 6-4. Yeah, you don't get much better than that. MAFS stands for Modular Airborne Firefighting System. So it's those tanks we're getting ready to load on these airplanes. It turns it into an air tanker, basically. We typically load up with 3,000 gallons. It turns out to be about uh, 28,000 pounds of retardant. 
comes out the nozzle with a quarter mile long swath of retardant along the edge of the fire. We typically drop on the edge, let the fire burn up to it, so our ground counterparts can then tackle that from the ground. The real goal here is supporting kind of a lot of the firefighters on the ground. Just imagine how long it would take a small team of firefighters to dig a quarter mile long fire line in the brush and trees. We can do that in about five seconds. This unit has responded to several fires in this region, starting with Heyman Fire, Wobble Candy Fire, Black Forest Fire after that, and others in the state of Colorado. Regardless of where the fire is at, the sense of urgency for getting the aircraft ready and getting on location to start dropping the slurry is the same. When we're fighting fires, whether it's another state, sometimes other countries, it's such a critical mission, we give it 110% all the time. You're flying above the ground at 150 feet, 120 knots near stall speed in the mountains typically. A lot of trust involved. We trust each other with our lives, literally. And we're proud of this mission, and we're going to be there and do the job. And on to the hurricane hunters. So to think that this mission started as a barroom dare between two Army Air Corps pilots who challenged each other to fly through a hurricane in 1943. July 27, 1943, Major Joe Duckworth flew a propeller-driven, single-engine, North American AT-6 Texan into the eye of a hurricane. He flew into the eye of the storm twice that day, once with a navigator and once with a weather officer. These were generally considered to be the first airborne attempts to obtain data for using and plotting the position of tropical cyclones as it approached land. Major Duckworth's pioneering efforts paved the way for further flights into extreme weather. And in this slide, you can see uh, Hurricane Hermine, some of their surveillance with that. Just one of the 81 sorties and over 700 flying hours that they flew as they tackled everything from Tropical Storm Bonnie to Hurricane Matthew. So these specially equipped WC-130Js are prepared to continue weather reconnaissance well into the 21st century. C-130s, so the 94th at Dobbins Air Force Base, participated in red flag exercises, Sabre Junction 16, Eager Lion 16, Maple Flag, Atlantic Resolve 17-1, and Sky First. In U.S. CENTCOM exercise Eagle Lion, which took place in Amman, Jordan, the 94th, trained over 5,000 personnel and were the only U.S. aircraft asset to, to participate. Atlantic Resolve and Sky First were also huge successes. The exercise greatly enhanced the interoperability and integration between the U.S. and Polish forces. I'd like to talk about the 302nd Airlift Wing in Colorado Springs, who successfully deployed 150 citizen airmen and four C-130s in support of Operation Freedom Sentinel. Over the course of the four-month deployment, the 746th EAS Squadron flew 466 missions and 1,028 sorties, amassing 209 combat and combat support flight hours. They achieved a nearly perfect effectiveness rate because of the outstanding efforts of the 746 Aircraft Maintenance Unit. This resulted in them winning the Aircraft Maintenance Unit of the Month in a deployed location for three months in a row. So the 302nd will have to fight it out with the 914th Airlift Wing for the best mission effectiveness rate in Operation Inherent Resolve. The 914th Airlift Wing at Niagara deployed to support Operation Inherent Resolve and came home with an outstanding 98% mission effectiveness rate and performed multiple resupply missions supporting coalition troops in contact. Our C-130s alone, supporting Operations Freedom Sentinel and Inherent Resolve, flew 2,705 missions while transporting 4,000 passengers, moving 1,097 short tons and 3,640 hours. The Air Force's Earth C-40s transported 1,200 DVs from the White House and their staffs to congressional delegations providing first-class, worldwide, safe, and reliable airlift. The citizen airmen flying our KC-10s in support of operations Freedom Sentinel and Inherent Resolve flew over 831 sorties and 6,900 hours, transported 1,000 passengers, and moved nearly 183 short tons. AFRC provided nearly 20% of the total KC-10 missions this past year across the globe. The KC-135 flew 2,307 training and exercise missions, transported 
2,472 passengers and moved nearly 54 short tons. Our KC-135s, while also supporting operations Freedom Sentinel and Inherent Resolve, flew over 2,300 or 2,003 sorties and about 11,800 hours supporting operations all across the globe. Our new fleet, our new uh, newest member of the fleet, the KC-46. To date, we have three citizen airmen as part of the initial cadre of boom operators flying out at Edwards. Those members are Senior Master Sergeant Scott Skurlock, Master Sergeant Aaron Ray, and Technical Sergeant Colin Wernick. Each of these are seasoned veterans in both the KC-135 and the KC-10, and they're paving the way for future testing and training. Our C-5s, while also supporting operations Freedom Sentinel and Inherent Resolve, flew 316 missions, transported 652 passengers, 910 hours, and moved nearly 146 short tons. And let me highlight our citizen airmen of the 512th Airlift Wing out of Dover, who are partners with Southcom in the fight against drugs. In a three-month period, they flew 83 tons of cargo, transported 47 passengers for, 40, for 63 hours, all in just 19 sorties. And then we have the, or the 315th, 315th out of Charleston, who would like to congratulate on winning the Rank Cross Trophy this past year, which is the best wing in 4th Air Force in 2016. So my congratulations and truly an honor, well deserved. Our C-17s, while also supporting Operations Freedom Sentinel and Operations Inherent Resolve, flew 2,917 mission, transported 12,004 passengers, roughly 4,000 flying hours, and 11, over 11,000 short tons. AFRC 17, C-17 fleet is also deeply involved in counter-drug operations. They flew 460 tons of cargo, transported 438 passengers, 480 flying hours, and did it all in 800, or 218 sorties. As you can see, the day-to-day -day contributions of our citizen airmen are making, uh, they're making major contributions all around the globe. And, uh, and the threats that we face in this role today are only becoming more complex as we, as we all have talked about and we will continue to talk about over the next week or the next few days. And the pace required to keep up with the threat is just ever changing. We will succeed in today's fight because of the strength of our partnership and the selfless service of our airmen. As one Air Force, we fly, fight, and win. And as one team, we can change the world. What I'd like to do is end uh, with a video called Weapon of Choice. And it was put together by the Public Affairs Shop, really just to highlight the contributions of that citizen airman. And I think it, it speaks volumes um, about the contributions that our citizens make to the defense of our country. So we can start the video, please. America has a secret weapon, standing ready every hour of every day to protect our way of life. Unseen, yet always there, it is a sentinel against evil. Established on April 14, 1948, it was envisioned to be a guardian of freedom a protector of liberty, a weapon of choice, ready to engage at a moment's notice.
Today, the Air Force Reserve is part of the world's premier air power, critically contributing to the Air Force's fight in air, space, and cyberspace. Protecting America anytime and everywhere. When America needs us, we are there. Until then, we could be anywhere. In your schools. In your workplace. On your streets. Always ready to serve you. Thank you for the opportunity to address you today. I think we've got two things going on. We're gonna unveil uh, a piece of artwork by Senior Master Sergeant uh, Darren, uh, or Darby Perrin, Darby Perrin. So if Darby Perrin can please come forward, please. Uh, and General Everhart, I think we're gonna help with the unveiling. If you wouldn't mind coming forward, please. That would be great. And while they're coming to the, to the stage, um, Darby Perrin did You'll see the, the um, artwork here. Um, he's one of our two great artists within the, within the Air Force Reserve, and this art will join the 10,000 plus pieces of art done um, for the Air Force. These artists do this on their own time and uh, donate this artwork uh, to, the, to the Air Force for the enjoyment of all. So what we are gonna unveil is um, the Deepwater Horizon, uh, it's called Operation Deepwater Horizon, and it is actually a depiction of the C-130 uh, flying the mission over uh, an area of about 30,000 acres. They dispersed 149,000 gallons of oil dispersant over a period of 92 sorties back in April of, uh, of 2010, helping out in that effort, all in a period of about five weeks. So 